What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe on Money Financial Channel and in this video I am laying out for you and exposing my complete 33 stock dividend investing portfolio with Robinhood. I've had a few different comments on the channel saying, hey, I would love to see a video detailing which of the positions you actually have and each different stock. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that, but I'm not gonna spend a ton of time here, even though I probably could. I wanna respect your time, so I'm gonna work, walk through these pretty quickly. Just know that in the description below, I'm gonna leave a timestamp for each of the different positions that I have. That way, if you've already owned certain stocks, you wanna skip those. You wanna see specifically why I bought certain stocks. Go ahead and jump to that timestamp. It's not going to be a problem for me. All right, I don't want to waste a single moment of your time. You clicked on my video when you had so many other options. So for that, I thank you. Just a quick brief intro here. I have a Robinhood dividend portfolio in a brokerage account. And the reason why I own these investments outside of a retirement account is because I have a specific need for the money. In four years, that's right, in 2024, our family is going on a year-long RV tour of the entire United States. Our four kids will range in age from eight all the way up to 14 and so we're really excited to take that trip and I've got to find a way to finance that sucker and I love dividend investing because dividends provide income and my income based on the way that I invest is going to grow every single year even if I don't buy any more stocks. If you're looking for a little bit more detail on why I invest in dividend stocks outside of a retirement account and more about this trip feel free to click on this video over here I'm gonna leave a description below as well as a link up above if you want to watch that video either before or after this video. All right, let's jump right into the portfolio. I'm gonna work alphabetically here just because, well, I don't know what other way to do it. Okay, first company here that I own is 3M. And the ticker symbol is, well, as you can see here, MMM, and it's part of the industrial sector of the economy. It's one of those companies that I own. I don't have a ton of them, but I do have a few that are champions. They've been paying increasing and consecutive dividends for 25 years or more. And for this company, it is 62 years. 62 years it's been paying increasing dividends every single year. Because most of the time, these companies have a lower yield than their competitors with less years of consecutive dividend increases. But in fact, the dividend and yield at the time that I bought this stock was around 3.99%. And as of July 25th, my ownership in 3M was 8.329 shares, which represents about 4% of my portfolio. And the average cost per share for my 8.329 shares is $147.30. So my yield based on cost is 3.99%. The reason why I bought this stock is one of those foundational stocks that is going to continue paying dividends and increasing them in the future. And I got a pretty good yield considering that. Okay, stock number two is AbV. This is part of the healthcare sector. It's a challenger, which means it's got eight consecutive years of dividend growth. It's actually an offshoot from Abbott Laboratories, which has a significant amount of dividend history. So you can almost consider this like a dividend champion. For AbV, I own six shares. Current value of those shares is about $582, and the average cost per share is $84.21. So my yield on cost. 5.61%. Stock number three is Eris Capital. I've already talked about Eris Capital a little bit recently, so I'm not gonna detail this one right now because I talked about it all in the recent video last week, so if you wanna watch that video, click on this one right up here and in the description below. All right, number four here is gonna be Bank First Corporation, Oklahoma. Ticker symbol is B-A-N-F in the financial sector. It's a dividend champion with 26 years of history. The payout ratio based on free cash flow is only 37%, which is great. It's got great dividend growth. And for this company, I own 39.852 shares, and the average cost per share is $37.96 per share. So my yield on cost, what I purchased it for, the dividend yield is 3.37%. All right, number five here is Bank of the Ozark. Ticker symbol is O-Z-K in the financial sector. It's a dividend contender. 24 years of history, so that's gonna pass and become a champion here really soon. And the payout ratio based on free cash flow, 21%, which makes it a super safe dividend yield right now. And for Bank of the Ozark, I own 33.753 shares, and the cost per share that I purchased it for on average is $22.22. .22 for a dividend yield based on that cost of 4.86%. All right, number six here is Caterpillar Inc. 
Ticker symbol is C-A-T in the industrial sector. It's a dividend champion. It's got 26 years of dividend history. I own 10.021 shares. And the average cost per share that I bought in at is $124.74, which based on that cost leads to a yield of 3.30%. All right, number seven here, Comerica Incorporated. Ticker symbol C-M-A out of the financial sector. It's a dividend contender with 11 consecutive years of dividend increases, and I own 36.259 shares of this company. The average cost per share that I bought in it is $37.19, and the dividend yield based on that cost is 7.31%, which is really great. All right, number eight on the list is Culp Incorporated. C-U-L-P, and that's a consumer discretionary sector of the economy. It's a dividend challenger. It's got nine years of consecutive increasing dividend payments. As of the making of this video, I own 66.257 shares of this company. Average cost per share that I bought in at $7.73 per share, which leads to a dividend yield based on the cost of 5.43%. All right, next up here, we've got SX Property Trust. That is ticker symbol ESS. This is one of the REITs or the real estate investment trusts that I own. It's a dividend champion, 26 consecutive years of increasing dividend payment. For this REIT, I own 2.104 shares. Average cost that I bought in at $239.88. And based on that cost, the dividend yield 3.46%. All right, number 10 here, General Dynamics, ticker symbol GD in the industrials sector. It's a dividend champion, 29 years of consecutive dividend payment increases. For this company, I own 6.907 shares. Average cost per share that I bought in at $144.77 which leads to a dividend yield based off of the cost of 3.04%. All right, next up on the list here, number 11 is Genuine Parts. Ticker symbol here is GPC. And this is a dividend champion with 64 consecutive years of dividend payments and dividend increases. This is one of those foundational stocks in my dividend portfolio that I don't have to worry about like ever. It's just going to keep raising the dividend every single year. For genuine parts, I own 5.045 shares. Average cost that I bought in at $71.62 per share, and that leads to a dividend yield based on cost of 4.41%. All right, number 12 here on the list is International Business Machines, or IBM. Ticker symbol is what? Well, you guessed it, IBM. This is a dividend champion as well. 25 years of consecutive dividend payments. And for this company, I own 8.103 shares of the company. Average cost that I bought in at was $59.23, which leads to a dividend yield of 5.5%. All right, number 13 on the list, Johnson & Johnson. Ticker symbol is JNJ. And this is another dividend champion. It's got 58 years of consecutive dividend payments and increases. For Johnson & Johnson, I own 7.25 shares. The average cost per share of a, that I bought in at was $137.93 which leads to a dividend yield of only 2.93% based on cost. I'm okay with this. This stock, Johnson & Johnson, Genuine Parts, um, M3M, these all give me a lot of stability in my portfolio. So I generally only look for stocks over 3% yield with a good strong dividend growth. But if I've got some certain stocks that can anchor my portfolio and give me stability, I'm going to go ahead and dedicate a portion of my portfolio for that, which is why Johnson & Johnson is in my portfolio given the low dividend yield. All right, next up here, number 14, Leggett and Platt Incorporated, ticker symbol LEG. That's in the consumer discretionary sector, and it's got 48 years of consecutive dividend payments, another dividend champion. For Leggett and Platt, I own 30.626 shares, and the value of the per share that I bought in at $32.65 per share, which leads to a dividend yield based on that cost of 4.90%. And again here, I don't care what the dividend yield is right now. I What matters to me is the dividend yield I bought in at. I only care about dividend yield when I buy the shares, and you should only care about that too. All right, next up here, number 15, Manulife Financial Corporation, ticker symbol M. FC in the financial sector. Only seven consecutive years of dividend payments increasing, but you'll notice here, even though it's a dividend challenger with only seven years, I've got some really strong dividend growth here and a really strong dividend yield. I own 54.633 shares of this dividend stock, 
and the average cost per share that I bought in at was $13.73 per share, which leads to a dividend yield on cost of 8.16%. All right, next up here, number 16, Marathon Petroleum Corporation. Ticker symbol here is MP, as in Paul, C, in the energy sector. It's a dividend contender. 10 years of consecutive increasing dividends. And for Marathon Petroleum, I own 40.287 shares. Average cost per share that I bought in at $37.23 per share, which leads to a dividend yield on that cost of 6.23%. All right, next up here, McDonald's Corporation, number 17, MCD. That's in the consumer discretionary sector of the economy. Another dividend champion, 44 consecutive years of increasing dividends. And you'll see here for McDonald's Corporation, I own 6.777 shares. I bought in at $185.46. And the dividend yield on that cost is 2.7%. Man, I'm kicking myself. I could have bought McDonald's at the right time about a month or two ago for about $130 per share. Man, those of you that bought it, I wanna know by the way, who here bought McDonald's at 130, 140 per share because you guys are making out like bandits. Not only if you decide to sell the company, but also you've probably got an amazing dividend yield over three, three and a half percent. Kudos to you. This is another company that I'm sacrificing a little bit of yield for, but I'm also getting dividend stability and dividend growth. All right, next up here, number 18, MSC Industrial Direct Corporation, Inc., and that is in the industrial sector, MSM. It's a dividend contender with 17 years of increasing and consecutive dividends. I own 14.194 shares of this company, and the average cost per share that I bought in at $71.28, per share, which leads to a dividend yield on cost of 4.21%. All right, next up here, we've got NACO Industries, ticker symbol NC, in the energy sector. It's a dividend champion again, 35 consecutive years of dividend payments. For this company, I own 56.113 shares, and the average cost per share that I bought in at $22.28, which leads to a dividend yield based off of the cost of 3.46%. Next up here, we've got National Health Investors, NHI. This is another real estate investment trust, or REIT. It's a dividend contender with 18 years of consecutive dividend increases and payments. You'll see here that I own 13.063 shares of this REIT, and the average cost per share that I bought in at $57.41 per share, which leads to a dividend yield of 7.68%. All right, next up here, number 21, NetApp Incorporated, NTAP. It's in the information technology sector. It's a dividend challenger. Seven consecutive years of increasing dividend payments. For this company, I own 14 shares and the average cost per share that I bought in at $43.05, which leads to a dividend yield based on that cost of 4.46%. All right, next up here, number 22, Next Era Energy Partners Limited Partnership, NEP, which is in the utility sector of the economy. It's another dividend challenger, seven consecutive years of payments. And for this company, I own 9.853 shares of the company, Average cost per share that I bought in at $50.75 per share, which leads to a dividend yield of 4.37%. All right, next up here, number 23, Phillips 66, ticker symbol PSX in the energy sector, another dividend challenger, eight consecutive years of payments. For this company, I own 13.821 shares, and the average cost per share, $72.36, for an average yield of 4.98% percent based on that cost. All right, number 24 here, Premier Financial, which previously was known as First Defiance. Ticker symbol here for this new um, offshoot of two companies is PFC in the financial sector. Nine consecutive years of dividend payments that are increasing. For this company, I own 72.364 shares. Average cost per share that I bought in at 17.28% which leads to a dividend yield of 5.09%. All right, number 25 here, Prudential Financial Incorporated. This is another company I just recently talked about in a previous video. So I'm not gonna explain this one again. If you wanna watch the explanation for Prudential, go ahead and click on this video right up here that I previously mentioned, and it's, the link for it is down in the description below. Number 26, Regions Financial Corporation, ticker symbol RF. Again, in the financial sector, seven consecutive years of the dividend challenger. And for this company, I own 177.834 shares. You'll notice this is one of my larger holdings here. Average cost per share that I bought in at $11.25. 
and this leads to a dividend yield based on that cost of 5.51%. All right, we're getting to the finish line here. You guys, you've been very patient. We're almost done. Number 27 here, Steel Dynamics Incorporated, STLD, in the materials sector, the dividend contender with 10 consecutive years of dividend payments. And I've got here 18.204 shares and the average cost per share that I bought in at $27.71, which leads to a dividend yield of 3.61%. All right, number 28 here, Cisco Corporation, SYY, another dividend champion, 50 consecutive years of dividend payments. And you can see here, I own 27.622 shares. Average cost per share that I bought in at is $54.31. And the yield based on cost, 3.31%. Number 29, UGI Corporation. Ticker symbol, UGI. And the utilities sector, another dividend champion with 33 consecutive dividend payments. And you'll see here I own 47.923 shares of the company. Average cost per share that I bought in at $29.42 per share, which leads to a dividend yield of 4.49%. All right, number 30, Unum Group, ticker symbol UNM, in the financial sector with 11 consecutive dividend payments. It's a dividend contender. For this company, I own 109.511 shares of the company. This one represents 5% of my portfolio and the average cost per share that I bought in at $16 per share, which leads to a dividend yield on that cost of 7.13%. Number 31 here, we've got Valero Energy Corporation, VLO in the energy sector, 10 consecutive years of dividend payments. And for this company, I own 47.643 shares. Average cost per share that I bought in at is $58.83 per share, and the dividend yield 6.6%. Number 32 here, we've got Walgreens Boots Alliance Incorporated, ticker symbol WBA. It's in the consumer staples sector of the economy, a dividend champion again, 44 consecutive years of dividend payments that are increasing. I own 24 shares and the average cost per share that I bought in at $41.94 per share. So the yield based on that cost, 4.36%. And lastly here, rounding us out, Westlake Chemical Partners LP, Ticker symbol here is WLKP in the material sector, seven consecutive years. It's a dividend challenger. I own 102.743 shares. Average cost per share that I bought in at $19.17. And the yield based on that cost is 9.84%. Okay, so those are the 33 different stocks that I own in my dividend portfolio with Robinhood. I know that took a long time, but I wanted to be very transparent with my holdings. I don't wanna be somebody here that kind of talks that talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk, Doesn't is not very transparent with their holdings. I intend to tell you every time I buy a stock, I sell the stock and what I own on at least a monthly basis. And if I make a certain dividend stock buy that I think you might want to know about, I'm going to let you know about it as well right away. With the exception of that recent company that I bought, ARCC, Aris Capital, which is a business development company with a really high dividend yield. All of my companies that I own follow very strict criteria. I target companies with a dividend yield of at least 3%. I want to see dividend growth of at least 8, 9, 10% every 1, 3, 5, and 10 year period. I want to see a dividend payout ratio based on free cash flow of less than 75%. So I really want to target 25 to 50% because that confirms for me that a dividend is strong and it's going to be safe in the future and grow. Now is the opportunity to leave your two cents in the comments below. Do you own any of these? holdings or do you want to let me know in the comments which specific dividend stocks that you own as well which ones based on what I own are you looking to target and also be on the lookout here because in early August I'm going to share with you the dividend stocks I'm targeting which ones I'm going to buy and as I buy them I'm going to jump on here and let you know which dividend stocks I bought what the average cost per share is that I bought in at make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below and if you haven't done it yet and how have you not done it yet make sure to hit that subscribe button below and click on the notification bell to be alerted to all of my weekly videos. Every week I put out two to three personal finance videos designed to help the average Joe out there. People like you and me with all things personal finance. Not only dividend investing for the average Joe, but also how to build your very first budget, how to pay off your consumer debt, how to invest for your retirement, and everything in between. So if that resonates with you, you should consider hitting that subscribe button below and joining the average Joe on money financial community. And the great news is, even though this video is about to end, the learning doesn't have to stop. You can click on these videos right over there.